sœur. Hello, everyone. See, we've got several people coming in. So we will get started in just a minute as you all um, come in our Zoom webinar. That's right, our virtual meeting. I don't know if I told you this last time, um, Sarah Whitney, but I feel like people are getting, they're getting so good at all of these different platforms that in some cases, like if I'm having trouble with something, the participants will be like, oh, just go do this. And I'm like, oh, okay, thanks. <laughs> I had a student do that last night for some reason. One of my things was like stalling and she was like, if you just do this and go here, I'm like, wow, okay, great. I've been <laughs> for six months now. Um, yeah. Well, I think we've got a good number and um, definitely excited to have you all here today with us with Hallie. Um, I will go ahead and get things off so we can get to her presentation. Sounds good. Ready to go. Yes. Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, How to Make a Change in Your Career Direction, brought to you by your Vanderbilt Alumni Association. I'm Sarah Whitney Anderson, and I'm one of the assistant directors for engagement. I'm so glad you could join us from wherever you are this afternoon. Today's webinar will last around 45 minutes with time at the end for questions. Please feel free to type those questions as you have them in the chat box, and you can send those directly to me. Um, I will make sure that these are addressed in some way before our time is up. We are also recording today's webinar and we will post it later on VU Connect so you can rewatch um, and have this at your fingertips. Many of you know our lovely presenter today from previous alumni career offerings, and I'm excited for it. The, today's discussion, Hallie Crawford, an alumna of Vanderbilt, is a certified career coach based in Atlanta, Georgia. Her company, HallieCrawford.com, and team of, of coaches have helped thousands of people nationwide uncover their dream career and make it a reality. Hallie is regularly featured as a career expert in the media, including Forbes.com, The Wall Street Journal, CNN, AJC, and Fox Business News. I'm excited to turn it back over to Hallie. Thank you, Sarah Whitney. And thank you everyone for being here today. Um, greatly appreciate your time during these continued um, crazy and unsettling times. Um, so we are gonna be focusing on how to make a career change despite everything that's going on in the world, um, especially given, as we all know, this is gonna be our new normal at least for a while longer. So it is possible to make a career change during this time. It may just take a little bit more persistence and a little bit longer, but those are the tips and advice we're gonna be talking with you about today. So um, excited to have you here. And as I said, appreciate your time, especially because I know a lot of you are obviously working from home and doing a lot of these Zoom calls. So one of the first things that I wanted to share with you on this next slide here is number one, that I know exactly how career transition, how tough, um, unsettling, um, and kind of scary um, it can be when you're trying to change your direction in any way, shape, or form. This was me a long time ago in my 20s. I'm now 47 and have been coaching for over 20 years. But at that time, um, on this picture on the slide, I had no idea what I wanted to do. And I actually had five different jobs before I was 25. Luckily, I was able to figure out my path relatively early on using some of the tools that we're actually gonna be talking about today. So fast forward about 20 years, and this is our website now. I absolutely love what I do. Our coaches and resume writers on my team do as well. We've got a great satisfaction rating with our clients. And so one of the things I wanted to tell you is that it is possible to truly enjoy your job and make even a pretty dramatic career change. We still have to be realistic about things, obviously. Um, and during this time of coronavirus, it may take you a little bit longer and it might be a good time to take some classes in order to work towards that new direction. But we don't want you to give up on it. It is possible to make this change. We've just got to be really smart about it and methodical and consistent, okay? So as we get into the content and I'll show you our agenda on our next slide here, the three components, kind of the main things that we want you to think about when you're considering changing careers and changing your career direction, whether it's, 
hey, I'd like to kind of stay in the same role maybe, but at a different type of organization, all the way to if you want to change industries completely and do something totally different. The three things you need to be considering and thinking about or mindful of are figuring out who you are as a person, but also as a professional, meaning what's really important to you in terms of, you know, fulfillment and reward. And what does that mean for you in terms of a job? all the way to what are your top strengths and how do you want to leverage those effectively to your personality type as well as what's the right work environment. The second thing that you need to be thinking about is based on those components and pieces and criteria, determining and thinking about, okay, where do I want to be going? What do I want my, not just my career to look like, but what do I want my life to look like and how is that going to fit in with my career or career fit in with my life? And then finally, we want to talk about um, the transition itself and the action steps that it's going to take for you to get there. And these are things we're going to touch on all of these today. Um, first of all, looking at our agenda, if anyone would like a copy of our PowerPoint presentation, we'd be more than happy to share that with you. Please feel free to email us at admin at halliecrawford.com. We'd be happy to share that with you. And we will have Q&A at the end, um, as Sarah Whitney said. We will try to get to as many questions as we can. If we don't get to everyone's question, please know that we're totally good with, if you want to email us later on, if you come up with another question that you think of in a couple of weeks, we'd be happy to answer those. Um, so feel free to use that same email for that. What we're going to be talking about today is how to define your direction and how to know what the right path is in the first place. We're also going to talk about how to narrow down your ideas. And even if you feel like you know a little bit of what your direction is and need to just kind of vet out a few of the ideas that you have, conducting informational interviews and how to conduct those effectively and why you'd want to do so in order to make the right next step. And then finally, talking about developing your brand and your materials for that new path and direction and drafting your transition plan. This is the, you know, these are the basics of what we're going to be talking about today. So let's dive into step number one, and we'll get to our first poll here in just a moment. We don't want to be like this person on the screen. We want to feel rewarded and fulfilled in our jobs. Now, here's the deal. We have had a few clients in the past 20 years tell us that the, you know, they don't care as much about having that sense of meaning or fulfillment in their jobs. Some people will tell us that they'll get that outside of work and they're okay with that. But the majority of the time when a prospect comes to us and we're working with them through coaching, the majority of them say, I do want to have some sense of meaning and, and sense of accomplishment or reward in what I do work-wise. Whether it's something that they're passionate about or if they just say, you know, I want to feel like at the end of the day, I, you know, it was a job well done, so to speak. One way or the other, people do want to feel engaged in their work in some way, shape, or form. And too many professionals are not passionate about what they do. There are statistics that come out every few years from the conference board, lots of different places that do these kind of surveys. Um, and at year after year, the, the numbers are too high. People are you know, not engaged in what they do. And as you all can imagine, because of and due to coronavirus, we've had a lot of clients tell us, you know, um, I actually don't like my job as much as I used to, because one of the things I really enjoyed was interacting with my coworkers. And some other people will say, I actually like the people more than the job. And that's what was keeping me there. So this can actually take a hit, understandably, due to coronavirus and this working remotely from home, too. So if we can pull up um, our first poll here, Sarah Whitney, that would be great. And if I need to do it, I'm good with that, too. I don't think that I can on here. Oh, good. She's got it. Oh, I gotcha. figured. In good hands. Okay, cool. So, <clears throat> oh, it's um poll number three. So we got to go to the first one. It's showing poll number three, Sarah Whitney. Okay, cool. I'm so, sorry for that. That's okay. No worries. Yeah, yeah, there we go. Okay, we got it. All right. So our first question is, how many people love what they do? And even if you don't feel like, well, I don't have to love what I do, like, at least have a sense of engagement and like you enjoy going to work in some way, shape or form. So we're curious how many people will say yes or no to this. And if you fit into the bucket of too many of us that don't or the other one, and we'll give you a moment here to 
participate in the poll. And hopefully, Sarah Whitney, my dog is outside barking. Can you guys hear me okay, despite that? You sound great to me, and I don't hear anything. Okay, good. That's why the Apple headsets are fantastic. Okay, nice. cool. So, Sarah Whitney, show us the um, results when you get a chance. And I am really curious about this, especially, like I said, because of coronavirus. Yeah, so 74% of people don't enjoy what they do. So you're in the right place. This is what we're going to be talking about today. Thank you for participating and for being honest about it. Please know that you're not alone. And what we're going to be talking about today in the next few slides here, and let me just skip over this next one. I did want to say something, but I'll do it in just a second here, is we really want you, for those of you who don't know um, what direction you want to head and you are feeling really unsatisfied, keep in mind that we are in kind of crazy, strange times. And so you want to think about, okay, so how much did I like my job before all of this happened? So how much of it is due to the current circumstances? Because that's gonna let you know whether you need to make a dramatic change or maybe not a change at all, depending on you know working from home and what your organization or company is gonna do. But this is the career model on this slide that we use with all of our clients to help them figure out what the right path is. But as part of this, everyone, the thing I want you to really think about is this can serve, these different pieces can serve as a checklist for you so that you can start to pick apart and understand, okay, what's working for me at my current job and what is not working? And is it possible that I can make some changes where I am in order to be happier? So I'll look through this very briefly with you because it is pretty straightforward. Do you get a sense of fulfillment and reward out of what you do? That's what the fulfillment piece is about. And we'll talk about how to define that in just a moment. But do I get a sense of meaning like I'm doing something good in the world or for other people, however you define it? Number two is you want to ask yourself, do I enjoy the tasks that I have to perform the majority of the day? For the most part, do I enjoy my tasks? It's okay if you don't enjoy some of them. That's normal for everybody. But you want to say for about 75% to 80% of your day, yes, I like the tasks I have to perform. Next, you want to look at and think about Am I leveraging my strengths, the ones I want to leverage, and am I leveraging them on a frequent enough basis? Again, we would like that to be around 75 plus percent. You also want to ask yourself, am I leveraging my education from Vanderbilt or otherwise? And do I want to do so? Are there classes in college that I actually really liked and I forgot about those and I should consider those as something to think about for a possible career path for my next step? Am I leveraging my past experience in the way that I want to? And again, in a way that feels good for me and rewarding and fulfilling. And then finally, you wanna look at your personality type and say, is my personality type the right um, fit for the role that I'm in and as well as the culture of my organization? So for example, if you're more introverted and you're in a very extroverted job, that's not gonna work for you in the long run. And it's gonna tell you that you may need to make a more dramatic shift. Finally, you want to look at the work environment and the culture. Is that a fit for you or not? And then your compensation. Do you feel that you're being compensated adequately and for what you deserve based on your expertise, experience, and skill set, for example? Okay. So the first step is we really want you to know what direction that you want to head, and you need to figure that out, obviously, before you conduct a job search. Because employers can tell if you're wishy-washy and you have like five different career paths that you're considering. You want to be as narrow as possible, okay? And the way to the first step to begin to define your direction and brainstorm different possible career ideas is we would recommend you identify your career values. We want you to do that first. And in the next slide here, we're going to talk about um, how to begin doing that. And let me just show you something really quickly from the previous slide, actually. So we start with fulfillment on this piece of the model with our clients to help them determine what the right fit is, because we find that fulfillment is the hardest thing to define for people usually. So they kind of, you know, forget it and they go towards what am I going to be good at and get paid, you know, good money. Um, and then they end up unfulfilled later. But number two, it actually, when they start to think about fulfillment first, it gives them the most career ideas and helps them brainstorm lots of different ideas right out of the box. And then finally, they'll start to go, they'll uh, start to walk across each piece of the model. But if you start with the fulfillment piece first, everybody, it's going to give you greater um, career ideas. And also, 
when you're starting to look at ideas and narrow things down, if you started with fulfillment versus some of the other practical, tangible things, you're going to get closer to something that is actually really meaningful to you than you would have otherwise. So Sarah Whitney, if we could do our next second poll here, that would be great. Our next question for everybody is how many people know what their career values are? Okay, so if you could respond to that one for us. And by the way, if you fall in the camp of, I don't really know what career values are in the first place, that would mean that you don't. And so go ahead and put a no for that. And listen, that's okay. Please know too that if you're not sure what they are, you're not alone. The majority of our clients, when they come to us, they don't know what they are and they need help kind of figuring this out. And that's part of what we're gonna talk about here on the next slide. So go ahead and complete our poll, please, if you would, just give us a yes or no. That would be great. And luckily my dog is not barking anymore. I know you all can understand and relate. Okay, so 71% said no, they do not. And 29% said yes, they do. So just by the way, for, um, I'll pull up this next slide here. For the people that feel like they do know what their values are, we do actually recommend revisiting and reevaluating your values about twice a year, just because they can shift and change over time. And what would be or have been meaningful to you in your 20s may be completely different than it is today. So for example, I'm 47 and what was meaningful to me and my values um, were different in my 20s because now I have um, a child, et cetera, et cetera. Now, what I will say, and then we'll look at this slide, is that your values shouldn't change like dramatically. Normally, people don't have one set of values, and then if they reevaluate them later, it's a completely brand new set. Usually, it's a shift kind of in priority and maybe a couple of different ones, but it is good to kind of keep these up to date because it's going to influence your career trajectory for the long run and what you wanna be doing. So <clears throat> the reason why it's important to define our career values, we kind of talked about all of that a little bit already. It's the cornerstone to our model. It's one of the foundational things that you really do wanna think about when you're trying to define your direction, okay? And the way that we can help you begin to define it, so here's some homework assignments we want you to consider is one of the things we'll have our clients do is just journal for a few minutes. It can be like 10 or 20 minutes at the most. It doesn't have to be that long. But think about what success means to you at this point in your life. So what is success? Is it about compensation? Is it about working with a certain type of person, um, helping a certain type of or certain population of people um, overcome a specific obstacle with their health and wellness or something else? So whatever success means to you, Write that out for a few minutes because this can be a good kind of catch-all that gets the, the process going, if you will, and kind of gets your juices flowing with the brainstorming. When you write that out or after you've written it out, <clears throat> it's a really good idea to then identify and pull out what are the key themes because that could give you some possible clues to either career paths you want to consider or to some qualities about the jobs um, or about the next career path that you want to pursue. The second thing we want you to do is think about a peak experience in your life. And we usually have our clients think about a personal peak experience versus a professional one. Because when they start with the personal, they really get closer to what, you know, it, it, in their heart, so to speak, and what's truly meaningful to them versus things they feel like they should say or put on the list, okay? And we want you to think about that peak experience and write about it for a few minutes and ideally, when you're writing about it, though, focus less on the details, like who you are with and what exactly you are doing, but ask yourself the question more of what was cool for me or great about this peak experience, because that can start to give you clues about what some of your values are. So, for example, if one person has a trip to Italy and they're talking about the planning of the trip, how long they were going to stay in each place, et cetera, et cetera. That person may be like an event planner, you know, as one idea, or it could be about creating experiences and working in the hospitality industry, for example, or project management or planning. Another person might have that same trip to Italy on their list as a peak experience, but they might be talking about the food and the people and the culture and things. Um, those could be things like other career po or possible career paths, I should say, could be things like is there something that I want to do to kind of create experiences for people? Is there something to do with like 
um, you know, working in the food and beverage industry or something related to history and different cultures, like working within um, a student exchange program and helping students go abroad. Obviously, we're not doing that now, but you get the gist, okay? So from your peak experience, write down what was cool about it, pull themes out of that, and then second with your peak experience, we highly recommend you share it with someone else, friend, family member, or coach like us, because another person can also really help you pull out things that you may not see or may not have realized from your peak experience too. Those are clues to some values, okay? And then finally, another way to get into your values and understand them is to think about things that you can't live without, things that are just so important to you in your life, and not just on the surface of it. So you might say your kids, your dog, your family, and that's great. You could have, you know, values of family, um, et cetera. But what's underneath that? Why is that so important to you? Is it because you define success that way? Or is it about, is it about the connection? Is it about the support they provide? So what's underneath these things that you come up with is what I want you to look at because that's going to help you dig a little bit deeper and identify what the values are underneath. And that's the critical piece. Okay. So I gave you some examples already. That was the trip to Italy. So let's go into um, the next couple of slides here. So one of the other things that you can think about in order to define your values, but also maybe to brainstorm or think about some career ideas is to go back to childhood and think about what some of your childhood aspirations or dreams were. And the reason why there's a mermaid um, on this slide from Wikiwachi is because as a child, I grew up in Florida and I wanted to be a mermaid at Wikiwachi. I thought that was the coolest thing going. Okay. And when I started to think about my career path later on, I realized, of course, that was, you know, childhood. I'm not going to go be a mermaid. But I did think about what was appealing about that to me as a child. And as I started to consider that and worked with my coach on it, I realized that there were some values underneath that childhood dream, values of educating people in some way, which is a big part of what I do as a coach, values of entertaining people in some way, too. And, you know, the beauty and kind of serenity and all of that that the mermaids provide, if you will. And you know what? I love creating and working on my PowerPoint presentations and my website as well, making it look better. There's this element of design that I kind of have that I enjoy, as well as education, like I said. And I really like hosting webinars like this because for me, there's the combination of the education and entertainment. So there could be clues from your childhood dreams that actually, even if that idea in and of itself is not something that's practical for you, the reason why it was appealing to you could give you some clues to things that you want to have as part of your job now and your career path, okay? So we already went through this model. Just really quickly, I wanted to share one more thing about it is that I do encourage you to work through it, starting from fulfillment, going across to the left, and then going up environment and compensation at the end. This does not mean that compensation is the least important item. It is critically important but we want you to brainstorm and really think big picture first and then narrow down your ideas based on practicality. Because if you handle it that way, you're gonna give yourself more expansive thinking time and you'll come up with more career ideas than you would have otherwise if you start to get practical too soon, okay? And I would encourage you all to use this as a kind of checklist as well for what is going right and what is not going right or well at your current job so that then you can evaluate how big of a change you need to make. And what I mean by that is if, for example, you can say, yes, this job is still fulfilling. I like my tasks. I'm leveraging my strengths. But you know what? I'm forced to be too extroverted and I'm more introverted or vice versa. But everything else is in the right place. You could think about well, is there a way that I can per perform my current job in a little bit of a different way? Can I get some assistance or help or support or lean on my team a little bit more so I can be more true to my personality type? If only one or two pieces on the model are off or off kilter for you, you want to consider whether those are things that you can get or fix at your current position versus making a move, okay? So just want you to think about that and noodle on that a little bit. I did want to offer you all, um, in order to work through, for those of you who really feel like you need help with your direction and feel really lost, we totally get it and understand that. This is what we do all day, every day. And our ideal career workbook 
is geared towards people who need to know their career direction and need to do, um, you know, more heavy lifting and kind of self-reflection to figure it out. So we wanted to provide you all with a 50% off kind of coupon, if you will. The coupon code is alumni. You can go to this website here. We'll send you the PowerPoint slides afterwards. And Sarah Whitney, maybe we can put this in the follow-up email. That'd be great. But if you use the coupon code alumni, you'll get half off of our workbook. It is the whole coaching program that we do with all of our clients with every single piece and step we walk them through in order to figure out their career direction, okay? So let's take a look at step number two. So after you've started to brainstorm some ideas based on the model and you've done a little keyword searching and maybe talk to a coach or family and friends, the next thing that you want to do is you want to leverage informational interviews, ideally to start to narrow down your ideas, but also expand your network for your job search. Now, here's the deal with this, and I'll pull up the, the next slide about what is an informational interview. A lot of you might already know about this. And I want you all to know that during COVID, <clears throat> it is still completely acceptable to conduct informational interviews. Lots of different reasons. We're all in the same boat. We all know that this is going to take a while longer to come out of it, you know, maybe end of next year, whatever it is before things get back to normal. Okay. So what we are telling our clients is don't stop or halt your job search. Don't stop the process of figuring out your direction just because everything else is going on. We have seen hiring pick up since Labor Day. We have had like 10 different clients over the past five months get brand new jobs. So there are places out there that are actually hiring, okay? And also there is nothing wrong with starting to lay the groundwork now for making a change in the new year if that timing is better for you. We are telling people that just kind of pretend that it's like holiday time. People are still networking. They're still doing what you know they wanna do and reaching out to people. You may not hear from as many people because we're all a little bit swamped with different things, or you may hear back from them a little bit, it might take a little bit longer for them to get back with you. So pretend like it's holiday time almost and conduct your job search as you would during that period. But absolutely continue on with it. Don't, you know, don't have it grind to a halt, even during holiday time later this year, because there are places that are hiring and needing it. So briefly, an informational interview, just as a quick reminder, it's a one-on-one -on -one conversation. It's most likely going to be phone, Skype, Zoom meeting, you know, given current circumstances. But what you want to be doing is you want to target people who are in an industry that you're interested in and learning more about at a company that you're interested in and want to know more about or in a role that you're curious about. So it can be any of these three kind of criteria. Those are the types of people that you want to look for. And I will tell you that it is one of the most underutilized tools in people's job search. They don't use it enough. So Sarah Whitney, if we could pull up our third poll here, that would be great. How many people have conducted an informational interview on this call? We're very curious about that. We have found over time that um, I would say that our clients are getting better at it. When people come to us more often, they have conducted at least one or two of these over the course of their career path. But we are still finding that too many people are still very hesitant to leverage them and use them. What we want you to know is that they're not just for recent grads. There's a kind of a, an assumption or stigma out there and that's absolutely not true. We have had very high level senior VP level people conduct informational interviews with great success. And it's also something that you need to consider that the other person can take care of themselves, so to speak. If they don't have the time or are unable to give the time, they won't respond to you or they'll say no and can we do this via email, whatever it is. So bottom line is we all know kind of this is the, the, the game of networking, so to speak, and we all know how it works. And think of, a, think of it as, you know, it's kind of like sales, that you might get like a 20% rate of return and response rate but that's why you have to reach out to as many as people, many people as possible over time. So the good news for our poll is that 52%, so a little bit more than half have conducted one. So that's fantastic. We want you to continue to do that so you can learn more about the different paths that you might be considering, but also how to put your best foot forward in your search. And for those of you who have not, please consider, you know, this next slide. And this actually goes for everyone. When we start with a client, we ask them point blank, what gets in the way for you the most? What's your biggest obstacle to achieving your career goals? Nine times out of 10, they tell us it's them. 
It's their fear. It's their lack of confidence. It's they don't make time for it, whatever it is. So push past these obstacles, everybody. Don't not conduct this, these networking meetings because you think they're for young people. You feel like you're too shy. You don't want to ask for help. Don't let any of these stand in the way. Now, I realize, especially if you're more introverted, like I actually am, I am 60% introvert and 40% extrovert. Um, sometimes it's hard. It's not our favorite thing to do. I get that. If that's the case for you, great book is The Introvert Advantage. Um, fantastic to help introverts be more extroverted, so to speak, when they need to be and find ways to um, connect with people that are more comfortable for them. But we don't want you to let this stand in the way. And what I will tell you is that when our even the most introverted clients, when they're working with us, once they get like one or two of these under their belt, they feel so much better about it, especially when it's just a one-on-one -on -one call versus approaching a group, okay? Why this whole networking thing and informational interviews are so important is because the majority of jobs are still secured through the hidden job market. And here's the deal. I would argue that even with the advent of LinkedIn, the hidden job market is still the best way to go. It's kind of like LinkedIn has made the, hidden, the pool of the hidden job mark, market even larger, so to speak. So we will have clients because we update their LinkedIn profile and we create a banner for them and brand it and put SEO keywords in their profile, we'll have employers reaching out to them, which is fantastic. But again, that's still kind of the hidden job market because those employers or recruiters may not be advertising their positions. So just as a reminder, a hidden job market is positions or openings that are found through headhunters, recruiters, or through networking, as we're talking about today, okay? So when you're talking with someone in an informational interview, you can again use the model as your kind of checklist to frame out the questions that you want to ask them so that you come across as professional, prepared, et cetera. You can use these interviews to narrow down your ideas and enhance your job search because, you know, two birds with one stone, you can ask them about their company, what their company looks for in, a, uh, in candidates. What are the buzzwords and keywords that they're looking out for and that matter to them right now? So you can do both, finding out if it's the right fit for you in terms of the work environment, compensation, your personality type, and every other piece on the model, but also how to conduct your search more effectively, how to get your foot in the door, and if this career path is realistic for you, what are the skills and education required, okay? So the things on this slide right here are all things that are fair game to ask someone during an informational interview, okay? So just some quick basics about this because this is gonna help you narrow down your ideas but also figure out you know, what your next steps need to be is you wanna start with warm leads and people that you know you want to be really specific and clear with them. I'm looking for 20 minutes of your time in an informational interview. You can use that word. Let them know that you're asking for information and advice. You're not expecting them to get you a job, okay? You want to be professional and act like it's an actual interview, and you always want to follow up and stay in touch with people, okay? So you start out with finding connections, people that you want to reach out to. You write up your email that you can use kind of over and over and just tailor it to each person. You obviously set, set it up and prepare for it, stay in touch, and then you also want to stay organized as well over time. Having an Excel spreadsheet is a really good way to track your networking efforts as well as track your career ideas that you're considering and what the qualifications are and what companies or organizations look appealing to you. So with your connections, just by the way, and this goes for making the actual change when you're ready to do so and kind of laying the groundwork for it, but also to help you narrow down and brainstorm career ideas too. So you want to start with warm connections first, like we said, but then look at LinkedIn connections. Look at your Vanderbilt Alumni Association LinkedIn group. And Sarah Whitney did not pay me to say that. We remind our clients of this all the time because they tend to forget it. This is where Vandy can come in. Um, really, really handy for this particular situation with this networking piece, okay? You can check out networking groups online, association groups. So what are industry-specific associations do, do, doing during this time to keep their members engaged? They're having virtual meetings instead, okay? And the informational interview can be conducted in several different ways. 
We would prefer, ideally, if you do it over the phone with video, because you can make that connection with someone and it can be a little bit stronger as a result, okay? We talked about this next piece already a little bit. You want to let them know you're looking for information. But one of the things that I would highly recommend is that you let them know in advance in the initial email that you've got these, you know, four or five questions that you want to ask them so that they know that you're going to use their time wisely and you're also not going to talk their ear off for two hours. So you want to let them know you're going to keep it brief. We would have about 10 questions prepared just to be safe because every once in a while someone gives you more time than you expect and you want to be ready and not have it be kind of dead silent. Okay. All right. So um, <clears throat> the last thing that we want to talk about, our third step for today um, in terms of changing your direction is you want to start preparing your materials to understand what, um, but also communicate what your brand is for this new direction, okay? So here's where um, the model comes in handy again. I know this is, you know, it's multiple things, but that's why we like it because it's, it's very helpful for a lot of different purposes. So when you're thinking about determining or understanding what your brand would be for this new or different or slightly different direction, you can go back to the model and say, okay, why am I interested in this direction? Because employers want to hear that. They want to hear why you're passionate about or enthusiastic about their job. You can also talk about and you want to include what your strengths are, your education, your experience, your soft skills that could be um, related to your personality strengths as well, okay? So you want to think about all of these things on the right side of the slide in order to start to understand what your new brand will be. Now, your new brand shouldn't be something completely different than what you were doing before necessarily because you're the same person. But in this case, if you're shifting directions, you want to be identifying how your strengths and your experience, what are tr what's transferable that can translate over to this new path, okay? So that's how you want to think about the new brand, so to speak. Finally, or actually, we've got a couple more things with uh, the branding and step number three. Sorry, guys. So one of the other things when you're starting to work on your resume, your LinkedIn, um, and updating your brand for each of those things, your cover letter as well, is we do want you to be sure to check your online presence. This is something that too often our clients will forget about. And there, so many employers, they're looking at it. Um, I would say even, you know, more so than 70% of people have been turned down um, from something that employers have seen, whether it's Facebook, it's Google, et cetera. So you want to just re-review your LinkedIn profile to be safe. But also, by the way, Google yourself to see what's out there online, just in case to make sure that everything that is you know, readily available, um, because you know that employers will do this for sure. They're going to Google you and they're going to go to your LinkedIn profile right away. So <clears throat> you want to make sure um, that you check your online presence and go through it just to be safe. Okay. Now, when we're talking about revising your resume and your LinkedIn profile, just a couple things about this on this slide. You want to make sure that both of them have the right keywords for the new direction that you want to pursue. Um, you want to make sure that the formatting is correct on your resume. It's contemporary. It's up to date. That you've got marketable results um, for each of your bullet points under your experience. This goes for your resume and LinkedIn. Okay. And you want to make sure that all of those bullet points are results oriented, not just kind of a glorified list of tasks. We do have resume writers on our team who are fantastic, who can help you with your LinkedIn profile or your resume. Just reach out to us if you'd like more information about that. Happy to share. With your LinkedIn profile, the summary at the top, the about section, it can be a little bit more personal. We have people use I in that, so you're speaking to the audience a little bit more directly. Remember that obviously you wanna have a professional photo. You can now put a banner behind your head on LinkedIn, and we highly encourage you to do that because it will help you stand out from the crowd. Get recommendations because we will have some clients use recommendations in some of their introductory emails to a hiring manager on LinkedIn for example, that they want to get in front of, or they might use an excerpt of them on their resume. And then finally, LinkedIn has all of these cool new features for job searchers. 
where you can let people know, recruiters and employers know that you're open to new opportunities. And there's actually under your headshot now, there's a green kind of, I call it a swoosh um, that says open to new opportunities. You can also have that as well if you're okay with people publicly knowing that you're looking, okay? One of the things I wanted to mention before we start to move towards our last few tips here and um, get to our Q&A portion is that if any of you feel like you need additional advice on what we're talking about today, especially if your situation is a little bit more unique and are also interested in learning more about our coaching services, we would be happy to chat with you. You can just email us at admin at halliecrawford.com. We'll get you set up with one of our coaches for a free consult. Happy to do that. Um, and we understand that sometimes people need, you know, really specific advice. And we do one-time quick 30-minute sessions. We have lots of different options for people to fit within your budget and your timeline. All right. So a couple more things about um, developing your um, materials is developing your elevator speech. So you do want to be prepared with an elevator speech or pitch, basically the same thing, so that when you're networking with people and talking with them, you're selling yourself effectively. It should be short and sweet. It should highlight and talk about the benefits that you can provide to a prospective employer. And it needs to be kind of memorable. So mine is, for example, I'm a certified career coach and I help people find jobs that make them want to jump out of bed in the morning to go to work, okay? So you want it to be something that is, it, at least is a little bit catchy and it's very result oriented though. And if you are networking with someone obviously, and you're looking for your new path, at the end of your elevator speech, you can let them know, I'm looking for a new position in XYZ, and I would love it if I could pick your brain, brain for a few minutes to get some ideas about that. All right, so step number four, this is our last step, and I've got um, one more slide before we get to Q&A here, is we want you to write your transition plan. This is a critical piece to the process. So after you've started to walk through the other things we've discussed, you need to decide for yourself, okay, what is my goal? Is this not a great time for me to be looking because the industry I'm looking at has hit, been hit hard by COVID, so I kind of need to wait until it comes back, or I don't know that it's going to come back as effectively or much as I need it to, so do I need to look at some related careers or ones that are similar? Once you've defined that and set a goal and a time frame for yourself, whether it's six, eight, or 12 months, for example, you want to create a schedule for yourself with a time frame for each item and action item that you're going to perform. You want to set up these job alerts online in addition to doing the networking so you can apply for jobs online as well. And you really need to stay organized with this. At the very bottom here, you'll see that if you'd like a copy of our job search worksheet that is pre-filled out to help you stay organized with this, happy to share that with you. Just email us and give that to you. And then the other things that you want to be doing is you want to make sure, kind of small things, but very important, you want to make sure you check your voicemail before you get into job search mode so that it's your voice, not that robotic voice. People connect with people, okay? And then you also want to make sure you have either a job search specific email address or that your personal email is professional sounding, not butterflies and puppies, okay? And make sure you've got a signature line in your email too that brands you and sells you. And you also want to include in your transition plan an accountability partner and doing things on a regular basis for self-care and to help you stay on track. The number one thing that our clients will tell us is, I've been thinking about you know, working with you for the past two years or whatever it is, trying to make a change for the past year or so. It's always that they've been considering this stuff for such a long time and they just didn't get to it. So make sure you do something and include in your plan an accountability plan or partner in some way, shape, or form. Okay. All right. So I'd like you all to think about, get out your pen and paper, please, and think about two action steps that you will take in the next week. Feel free to share those online and ask questions as we start to move into that. We'll be monitoring the chat box. Okay. So write down two things that you will do. It could be, I need to update my resume and start working on that could be I'm not even on LinkedIn. So, ooh, let's get that going. It could be I need to evaluate my current position um, using the career model and using that as a checklist to know how dramatic of a change do I need to make. 
And this great quote from Michael Jordan, I wanted to share with you all about if you're trying to achieve something, just keep in mind, there's always going to be roadblocks. Successful people, it's not that they didn't have any roadblocks or obstacles. It's that they knew how to work around them and get to pass them. So the obstacles don't have to stop you. If you run into a wall, don't turn around and give up. Figure out how to climb it, go through it, or work around it. Okay, that's what really successful people do. All right, Sarah Whitney, so we are ready for the Q&A, okay? Um, as you all are formulating and thinking about your questions to submit those, wanted to remind you to please feel free to connect with us on LinkedIn for more advice because we are trying to pump out as much helpful, useful information as possible during this crazy time for people. We know people are struggling in a lot of different ways. So please connect with me on LinkedIn because we are sharing a lot there, okay? And we've got one comment so far, and I'll pull this up too for those of you who might need the workbook. Um, you missed 100% of the shots you don't take from Michael Jordan. That's fantastic, I love that one. I didn't know Michael Jordan was such a good quote or person to quote, but um, now I do and I need to pay attention to that. Thank you, Petro, for sharing that. So any other questions that anyone has or comments they wanna share before we start to wrap up for today? We'll give you a moment here because I know sometimes it takes a few minutes and sometimes people are writing things down too. Yes. And oh, Sarah Whitney just. Yeah. Go, go ahead. Tell me. Um, everyone go ahead and just send those to the chat box and we'll read those out. Yeah. So what I was going to say is on some Zoom, while you guys are thinking, on some Zoom calls, there's like a Q and A feature too, Sarah Whitney. So maybe it's just a different type of account or something. I feel like they're changing their stuff all the time. I can't keep up. We um, disabled the Q and A and just did the chat for webinars just because we weren't sure people were comfortable sharing their questions to the to the yeah. group. So we're kind of playing with so that. That's really good to know because I feel like too, I wonder sometimes if having both is confusing for people. So that's really cool and good to know. Thanks for sharing that. Yeah, we're still kind of, since we're new to Zoom webinar, we, after we moved to GoToWebinar um, or moved from GoToWebinar, we thought it was also confusing having the two forms. So we're still playing around um, to, our, to our attendees. Please let us know if you've got, if you prefer the Q&A and you don't mind sharing your questions or if you do like the chat. Um, but we do have some questions. Yeah. So why don't we go ahead and get into those? Um, our first yeah, so how often should we reconnect with people we've had informational interviews with? Oh, good. Okay, good. I see this one. That's awesome. So um, what I would do is it depends a little bit on the person that the networking connection, if they've given you some connections that, you know, they want you to follow up with or that you want to or whatever, you're going to obviously check in with them more frequently. But as a general rule, I would check in with them like once a month, give or take. Um, that's sort of a reasonable amount of time where it doesn't feel like you're stalking them, but you're staying top of mind. So Sarah Whitney, I see this next one. I'm going to go ahead and read it out if it's good by you. So um, what do you recommend when you are struggling to identify new or attractive options? After a few years, I feel like I keep coming back to the same things that don't excite me. How can I search more creatively and effectively? So that's a great question. So I would um, use the model um, that we shared with you today. And I would do the values exercise, um, all three of those, to try to start to understand what would be really meaningful and exciting to you. So I would start with the values exercise first and try to define what some of your values are that you actually do want to translate over into a job in some way, shape, or form. And then you, could, you might be able to use some of those as keywords to search on Google, like careers related to X value or careers in X value, whatever it is, if that makes sense for what your values are. You can also use, do the same thing, do a Google search or a search on job boards for some of the keywords of things that are interesting to you, but also some of your strengths. And we find when clients do that and they plug it into both Google and job boards, it starts to get kind of the juices flowing again. Um, as I said earlier, 
and give them some other ideas because on the job boards, especially it's searching kind of in the job description itself, not just with the title. So that can be a good start to help you kind of cast your net a little bit wider. Great question. All right, do we have any others here? These are really good. And informational interviews, we talked about those. And I now have a new quote from Michael Jordan too. Advice for generalists. Okay, here's another one. Advice for generalists or people with a wide variety of interests and values matches their personal, right? So the way that you want to do this when you need to narrow down a lot of different ideas <clears throat> is you want to start to narrow it down based on practicality. So again, if you go back to our career model and say, okay, you know, I have all of these strengths, but I really would like to leverage these top three strengths and that's it. Start to kind of, you know, look at your top priorities, but then also start to say, okay, what's going to pay me the amount that I want to be made? What are the roles that are really going to fit with my personality or not? Going through the model should help you narrow things down a little bit more because that's the purpose of it is you start with the fulfillment section and that gives you a wide swath of ideas, so to speak. But then as you start to think about what's really going to be practical and realistic for you to pursue, that can help you narrow things down a little bit more. And if you do feel like, you know, a little bit of a generalist, again, it's going to be a combination of, you know, what are your top strengths, but how do those mesh with your personality type and the right culture fit? as well as compensation. So that should help give you a start with that too. All right, so Sarah Whitney, I've got to hop off here in just a second because I've got a two o'clock call that I've got to be ready for. Um, do you see any other questions that we need to answer? No, I think we're good, especially I think you covered so much in this presentation. So thank you so much. And as she mentioned earlier to everyone, um, I guess you can show my face. Um, <laughs> that um, if you have any questions even later this week, feel free to send those to me or the admin email that Hallie mentioned earlier that there's still plenty of time to get your questions in or if something just pops up. Um, so make sure I don't miss any of my announcements. Um, Hallie, thank you again for sharing this wisdom. I know I took a lot of notes um, and I think it's just good for us all to be making sure that we're in the right place and being mindful of Am I really wanting a change or is it this new season that we're in and how to decipher the difference? I think that is really important. Um, I wanna encourage you all to check out all of our career resources. They are still mostly virtual. So definitely be making sure that you see those going on. You connect, if you have any questions about anything, feel free to reach out to me. Um, I am dropping our feedback link right now in the chat. So we can hear how you thought about today's webinar and if we can make any edits or just hear if there's anything, any topics that you are curious about. I will send a follow-up email with this archived link as well as that feedback request again later this week when we have everything settled. Um, we're always looking for new opportunities. So if you have any ideas or just a topic that you're wanting to get more out of, please send my way. Otherwise, thank you for joining and I hope everyone has a wonderful Thursday. Have a great rest of the week, everyone. Thank you for being here. Appreciate it. Thank you.